Hello everyone. So today I am going to discuss about multiple data source that in a Spring Boot applications whenever we are going to develop any Spring Boot applications so then we are using some databases right for fetching the data or maybe storing the data. Now maybe that is fine if we are going to use any single database like we are going to use any databases like maybe that can be Oracle, that can be MySQL, that can be PostgreSQL or maybe NoSQL. So there is a like any database we are going to use. But the thing is that if there is a need, if we want to fetch or save data maybe into multiple database from one microservice or one application, Spring Boot application, then how we are going to achieve that means how we are going to connect two data source with single app spring boot applications so here as i uh, explain uh, means depicted over here means suppose is there any client that actually trying to uh, there's one spring boot application and from over here we are like as you can see over here there is one mysql database another one is a postgresql so basically based on some needs or maybe we are trying we have store some data into some in mysql or maybe in PostgreSQL. So based on the need or based on the situation we are going to fetch those records from the each in any uh, any any like uh, any any database either maybe MySQL or maybe PostgreSQL based on the need. So here I am going to in this tutorial I am going to explain that in a Spring Boot application how we are going to fetch data or maybe save data into a multiple um, like uh, database okay. So that means for accessing or maybe using the means uh, accessing the multiple database we need to do some configurations into our Spring Boot application so that we can access those data or maybe save data with the multiple data source system. So in this tutorial we will focus on that that how we are going to uh, like accessing multiple database or configure multiple data source into our Spring Boot application. So for that we need to create one Spring Boot application and in the Spring Boot application we need to add some properties and then we need to create some other configuration that I will show you that how we are going to create those things okay. So without further ado let's create the project and uh, connect multiple data source from the Spring Boot application. So for demonstrating the multiple data source in a Spring Boot application so I have already created one Spring Boot application as you can see over here that is a multi hyphen data source and then uh, like imported in my editor like Eclipse I'm using you guys can use any editor IntelliJ or like STS okay so after importing the first things we need to do that is we need to put the database informations over here okay so for demonstrating as I'm using the SQL EO means uh, MySQL so basically I will create two schemas in a MySQL one is the like uh, db1 another one is the db2 okay and uh, I need to put some configurations over here so let me put this one uh, like uh, this one okay so this is the data source URL db1 this is the schema one I have created username password whatever the username and password you have said in your local that you need to put over here and this is the driver name and this is the second data source the url would be the same only the schema name will be different db2 username password and the any driver my this is the mysql driver if you are using the any postgresql then you can define the postgresql uh, like properties over here username properties and the postgresql driver okay so this is the things and you can see that in the pom file basically uh, have added the dependencies like uh, Spring Starter Data JPA, Starter Web, Spring Boot Dev Tools, Lombok, and the MySQL connector because we are using the MySQL over here. Okay, so there are some other properties uh, like I can use, like uh, the dialect basically we need to use. So this will be the same for all the JPA data source. Next, we need to create like uh, DDL auto update because once we'll app start the application, then it will basically uh, create the tables and all those things over here, like uh, whatever the entities we are going to create over here. So that actually basically create over here. Okay. So and whenever we are going to perform any database operation, so those SQL will be displayed in the console. 
so next basically we are going to create uh, like a uh, entity or model so let me create one package over here like data source dot uh, maybe uh, we can actually db wise we can segregate so let's say for db1 or like database one or maybe first db so we can say like db1 dot model okay or entity so here we are going to create like let's say we are going to create the user uh, depend user like table over here okay so user table we need to create over here uh, okay so let me create this model over here like this user okay so here basically you can see that i am using the long box so that's why it's a kind of uh, we can say that we don't need to write the getter and setter actually basically we just only provide this uh, getter and setter annotation all argument constructor no argument constructor and the entity and the table name okay so table name will be the user and the entity means it's a kind of mapping like from the hibernate and the like a database actual physical database we need to do some mapping so that's why it's a uh, like uh, we need to do this uh, kind of mapping over here okay next basically what we need to do we need to like uh, create another entity which will basically for db2 so here we are going to create another package so instead of db1 it will be a db2 so here we are going to create let's say another package name let's say like product okay so let me create this one product uh, okay so here product is created now so this will be the product all the things will be same only the table name will be product instead of like there is as it is a user tables and this is the product table so means for the db1 basically we are going to fetch or save that in the user table and for db2 whatever the instance we have created for this db2 we are going to create the one table that is called a product and we are going to save some record inside of this product table okay so next we are going to create the like repository so for repository we need to create another package for maybe db1 for db1 dot repository okay and similar kind of thing for db2 also we need to create another repository so let me create another package over here why i am creating different repositories for uh, like uh, for db1 and db2 that i will show you later on like whenever i am going to demonstrate in the later phase of this uh, tutorial so for db2 basically you need to create the product uh, repo so as you can see this is the like repository interface so either we can mention is at the repository annotation this is not mandatory and over here we are going to pass this product as entity okay and for this uh, db1 repository we need to create uh, like uh, uh, user repository right because uh, in the db1 user table is belongs to so this uh, user repository we need to create over here okay what it is saying okay okay so this is like uh, done now like user repository got created like what we have created now till now we have created the entity and the repository so next what we will create we will create the like service layer okay even before that also what you can do you can create the configurations for like maintaining that how we are going to create the like multiple data so this is the like main thing okay so let me close uh, others tab over here and let me create one package basically let is basically call this uh, db1 config okay or uh, like ds data source uh, config basically so let me ds1 data source one basically and dot config okay so here basically we are going to provide the configurations for uh, data source uh, one okay so let me create one class over here like uh, data source config one okay or data source one config 
Okay, so first of all, basically, we need to annotate uh, this class with uh, configuration annotation, and then as we are doing the configurations manually, as we are doing the configurations manually over here, so we need to maintain or we need to configure all the things like uh, entity manager, then like we need to provide the like base packages, then transaction manager, all those things we need to provide over here. So how we are going to provide that? First of all, after this configurations, we need to use this enable transaction management, okay? And then we need to use another annotation that is called the enable repositories. And over here, we need to like uh, provide something over here, okay? What are those things like uh, entity manager reference over here, okay? This is the like reference of this entity manager. Like we need to provide the bin, then we need to provide the like base packages. Like what will be the for data source coming? What packages basically they need to scan actually? Okay, so we need to provide the base packages, then transaction manager reference. Okay, we also create the transaction manager reference bin, and over here we need to reference the transaction manager bin. So these three things basically we need to provide over here, like this entity manager factory reference then base packages then transaction factory so for the base packages basically as we are going to configure data source for database one actually so here we are going to configure this package name like this data source one repository so in the base packages we are going to provide the name for this okay so this will be the repository that actually basically going to scan for this one for table and all those things this data source configuration one okay so next we are going to create the like data source and uh, entity factory bin and then like uh, transaction manager okay so over here we are going to annotate uh, we need to use the environment variable for like uh, using those uh, for using those uh, properties from over here okay so we are going to use this environment for this so let me create the bin for this data source okay so let me call it as a first data source okay and this will be the primary bin of this one and over here you can see we have created one class like uh, this is the existing class driver manager source and over here we need to pass set the url driver name username and password so here you can see this is the spring dot data source dot url so these are the like basically first data source name so these are the fields that we have set over here by programmatically okay so in this way basically we have created the data source and here we have passed those uh, properties over here okay so this is the bin for this creating the data source next we are going to create the bin for entity manager factory bin okay so how we are going to create this so this is the basically way for creating this like uh, this is the basically local container entity manager factory bin that basically class we need to use for defining the entity manager and over here we are setting the data source and this data source basically we are passing over here okay and uh, also you can see here we need to provide the like uh, packages like for model basically we need to provide the path over here and we have for data source one we have keeping the package name over here right this data source dot db one dot model so this is the like base package to scan then jpa vendor adapter using this adapter we need to set this adapter over here okay and after that, the basic properties like Hibernate Dialect, SoSQL, then uh, uh, HBM2 SQL. So these are the like kind of properties that we are added in a map. And then in this particular bin, like this local container entity manager factory bin over here, we are set those properties over here. And then finally, we are returning this bin, this local container entity factory bin. And this particular name, basically, we need to, this name, basically, we need to, kept provide over here this is the like entity manager factory bin so this name we need to provide over here okay so next the another portion is pending like that is called this uh, uh, like a transaction manager so this is the like platform transaction manager we need to provide here this is like jpa transaction manager and over here we need to pass this entity manager factory bin and then it will basically return this manager and this transaction manager we need to provide over here 
so this is the basically configurations for data source configurations one in similar way we need to create the another configurations for database two configuration okay so let me create another package over here which will be for data source two right so let me create another package okay and here basically let me copy this one okay or uh, we can just rename this one data for because it will be a data source 2 okay so now here we need to like uh, modify something because uh, uh, like here the package name will be different like instead of db1 it will be db2 correct and uh, also like uh, instead of this uh, second this will be a okay so this will be the second data source correct and here this properties will be changed because this will be the for first data source but here we are going to use the second data source url so we need to copy the url from over here over here we need to copy this one and here basically we need to paste this second data source url in similar way we need to use this uh, like second data source driver class name then like second data source username second data source password okay and here also it will be instead of db1 it will be a db2 this will be properties will be keeping keep same over here because this will be not gonna change these are the common properties instead of first entity this will be the second entity manager factory bin in similar way also the transaction manager will be a this will be also a second one and here also you need to modify this will be the second transaction manager and this will be the second entity manager factory bin over here so now data source configurations wise we are done now means we have now configured the two data source in a single spring boot applications okay so these are the like this is the option that we can uh, we can like uh, configure the data source there are other options for instead of like taking those properties from over here directly we can use the configure properties with some prefix it will automatically like pick those properties from the properties file and then it will set over here okay so now the data source things wise done now so next we are going to create uh, like a service layer so that we can maybe we can do some uh, operations uh, like uh, okay so data source dot service means we are basically writing this service layer for uh, saving the data into the database okay uh, like uh, we need to create two services one is the like product service another one is the like user service okay so like this is not a complex basically just to like uh, save data into the like uh, database okay nothing else basically so let me open this product uh, uh, service one so here you can see this is the service class and here we have used this product repo and uh, this product basically will be coming as a request over here and then uh we are is having this id name and price so based on the details that we are passing from the postman it will be basically uh once we have saved this data so it will basically save the data okay so nothing complex over here we are just like focusing on uh, uh like what uh, like just to like kind of uh, uh what you can say just focusing to main concept like the how we are going to use multiple data source okay not to the main code logic and all because in a real scenarios the code will be more complex and entity having lots of mapping other entities right so instead of focusing on those areas we are just focusing that how we are going to used multiple data source into our spring boot applications okay so this is also this is a service class that uses service and here the simple thing like based on the repository we are saving over here okay so next the last things basically that we are going to create one controller over here and in a controller basically we are going to uh, uh, like uh, used uh, uh, those uh, entity uh, sorry uh, use those rest api like one is the product controller basically and another one is the like to uh, user controller for saving the product uh, information okay so let me like uh, use this one also product controller over here okay so as you can see this is the rest controller then request mapping for this one and then we have annotated use this inject this product service this is the post one for saving the product information into the database and then like we are using this service we have saved the details and finally using this response entity we are 
return the data into the like postman or maybe whatever we are returning the response basically okay and uh, similar way we can use the create the user controller which will basically save the data for user okay it is also be similar to the product and uh, as you can see over here like uh, here we have uh, rest controller then request mapping then user service and this is the post mapping for saving the user details and we have created this save method and here we are passing this request body and user this is the like uh, tables that we are basically in that format we are which means getting the data from the request and after that basically uh, it will save the data into the database okay so this is the all about this project creation and how we are going to configure the multiple data source into our existing or maybe into our new app Spring Boot applications. Next what we will do we will create we will start this application and then like uh, we will see from the postman that how it is uh, saving the data into the database. Okay. So let like start this application and uh, check from the postman so from here we can start this application let's see like how it is it is giving any issues or not because we have just configured two database over here so maybe we are facing some issues but let's see like uh, we are facing any issues or not and here we are going to you we have to use this spring data jpa okay so also we can see some sequels for creating the tables and all okay so tomcat initialized uh, initialized with port 880 okay and uh, you can see these are the like created okay so two time means for two actually dialed is loaded over here you can see right because uh, we have enabled two database okay now suppose like it's started now now suppose if we want to save the product and uh, save the user right so I have already like uh, uh, added the endpoint over here so let me add the product over here okay so in the body basically I have passed uh, this JSON over here so I just need to add like this is the product ID product name and that price so now if we want to like we have call this save product so it will basically saved okay you can get the response 200 success and now also you can save the user so 880 api and save user in the body also you can see the name and age so now if we send this one so after saving data okay it's also got created now if we open the database over here okay so in the db1 so db1 basically user is there right so user tables got created now if i refresh the data you can see data is over here and for product also we have saved the product details so you can see the product details also got inserted over here okay so now like in the console you can also see that insertion of this product is saved over here and also the user but these two inserted into different uh, like uh, basically different schema correct or maybe different data source instead of mysql we can also use some other databases like uh, mysql or oracle or maybe mysql postgre postgre or oracle or h2db okay so any kind of two database or multiple database basically we can use so these are the configurations that we need to perform for um, configuring the multiple data source into our system okay so this is the like overall things so of that how we are going to configure multiple data source into our into ex, into a spring boot applications okay so this is the like a small configuration that we do okay nothing complex over here for creating the or accessing the multiple data source if you guys still have any issues then please do let me know in the comment section uh, okay I will try to like uh, figure it out like if you guys are any is any issues or not don't forget to subscribe my channel I will also put this code into the github uh, github like uh, source code into the github source code okay and also share that link in the in, uh, description section so that you guys can access the code of this one okay and uh, don't obviously don't forget to subscribe my channel please press the bell icon for further notifications uh, and uh, thanks for your time See you in my next video. Bye-bye.